Howdy folks! In this video, we're going to be discussing some of my anxiety and paranoia. I, I mean, talk about parties. And I don't just mean the cliche, socially inept engineer sense, but more about how parties can affect the building that they're in. Can a party actually overload a structure? So I've been working on the structural design of some mid-rise residential projects in the city. Uh, to be more specific, these buildings are in the West Campus neighborhood of Austin, which borders the University of Texas and is the most densely populated neighborhood in the whole city. Now, typically, the IBC would designate for this kind of occupancy, engineers like me should account for a live loading of 40 pounds every square foot across a residential floor. But here is where my mind racks. I, I mean, these are college kids. If there is any demographic of people that's likely to bust the seams of a norm, or in this case, to exceed a, a design load, it would be them, right? I, I would know. I, I did go to a party in college once. So there's the premise of what we're gonna review today. Could a serious rager be a danger, not just to your liver, but to the building itself? And if you like the content, please hit the like and subscribe buttons for, you know, reasons. So let's break this out in a few steps. Taking a look at the design loads, a theoretical example, and then we can have some fun and look at some examples from media. So how would I know if a party was unsafe from a load perspective? Well, if the total weight of everything that's on the floor exceeded the strength of the floor, usually governed by shear or flexural capacities. But that burrows a little bit deeper than we need to today because we can just compare the design loading to the applied loading. The design loading is going to be broken up into dead and live components. Uh, there's no puns intended here. The, the dead being the weight of the structure and any permanent fixtures like exterior walls, and live loads that act in a more temporaneous manner. Uh, these are going to be the variable that we're looking at today. So live loads are the short duration weight applied by a group of people sitting in a room for a few hours, but it's also inclusive of the couch they're sitting on or any furniture that might be likely to move around over time. So as we mentioned above, a typical residence can be expected to load the structure at a clip of about 40 pounds per square foot based on a code provisions that are rooted in rigorous studies and statistical analysis. More or less, if the body of knowledge says that if it's safe to design for these values, then the, the structural integrity of residential buildings should be upheld. Cool, so starting with 40 PSF, oh, and one more thing. But there is one more thing. The building code also allows, and engineers do often take advantage of, a couple of different methods of reducing the amount of design live load based on the tributary area which for our case is going to be defined as the square footage area of a slab region between sports, or, or in our case, columns. And we've got two generally accepted methods for reducing live loads. There's an older method that allows reductions up to 40% starting at 150 square feet of trib area, but my preferred, because it's more conservative in some ways, will allow for up to 50% reduction, but beginning at 400 square feet. So that's the baseline. For a room that's 550 square feet, like the red living room that we're gonna look at here, we could probably be designing this for a total of 20,000 pounds for the conservative method or 15,000 for the older method. Taking an example layout, some apartments can be as small as 400 square feet, but even the shared spaces of the four bedroom setups might only yield enough room for a few dozen people. But let's look a little more specifically at about how one of these rooms might get loaded. Okay, that one was a pun. So these are college kids, and I don't think I have to worry about any thousand pound pianos or heavy armoires. More than likely, they're operating with some good old IKEA furniture. In the living room, we'd expect an entertainment center, a couch or two, some tables, and miscellaneous stuff, like maybe a rug or a bike. Uh, so this all totals up to about 1,200 pounds, which would only be about 10% of even the low estimate for the design loading. But of course, during a party, people will be jam-packed into this room, dancing and jumping about, and that's going to make up the lion's share of the live load allowance. Spitballing some numbers for the weight of an average college student, and let's say that this 10-bed super apartment that has a 550-square-foot living room uh, plays host to a 40-person shindig, well, we're, we're still looking at uh, about an additional 6,500 pounds and running at a total of about half of even the reduced allowable load for this area. I'll pump those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers. 
Now, is 40 people for one living room a lot? Well, to me in my personal space, definitely. But maybe to college kids in a post-COVID world, it's not a big deal. How much room then would each person have if they were uniformly distributed around the room? Uh, well, maybe about 14 square feet, and that means you know one to two feet between each shoulder and three feet face to face. But as anyone who's had a conversation in a room with blaring music knows that if you're not yelling at the top of your lungs right in their ear, you have a 0% chance of being heard properly. That's just math. So it sounds like we have more room for people at this party. Welcome to the Delta Toga party. Let's double that to an 80 person rave. Now that ends up at 13,000 pounds plus the weight of furniture, which just about reaches the design load of the less conservative older method. Of course, our 80 sardines would be literally shoulder to shoulder to face to face, but technically speaking, they could fit. If that's what it takes to reach the limits of code mandated designs, I think that we as structural engineers can rest easy, uh, on the other side of town at least. But what about when the music hits, the beat drops and everyone jumps at the same time? Uh, how does that affect it? Well, the easiest way to assess it would be by applying an impact factor to the load, which is accounted for by this equation here. It's based on a few factors, the height at which people are descending from and the stiffness of the floor system, and unfortunately for our designs, the impact factor basically starts at 2, meaning a 50 PSF impact load would act like a 100 PSF life load. Now I imagine some scenario in which the whole basketball team jumped at once, then their drop height might be so high that only a few dozen people could exceed our design load. Granted, for our case, that should be plenty for a room this size, but if this 10-bed apartment did invite more than one friend each, should I be worried? Well, maybe not. Uh, there are factors of safety baked into the design process at several steps along the way, which can range in magnitude from one and a half up to five, uh, depending on the uncertainty of the in-place conditions. Another aid will be the way that structures absorb and disperse impact loads, and how that response differs from a sustained load. As it turns out, the strength of an instantaneously loaded structural member often outperforms uh, the standard analytical models, which are based on a more sustained or long-term loading. Even then, outside of practicality, how coordinated is our basketball team really going to be? Any dissonance will reduce the peak of that impact. So don't hesitate the next time the MC tells you to Now to the fun part. Let's explore some examples from media that show wild parties, and let's just see how they compare. If we're to believe iconic party movies like Superbad, Project X, This Is The End, then a good party can vary pretty wildly from skateboarding on the roof to demon summoning. And while these are obviously exaggerated depictions, once an idea gets out, anything can catch on, right? <laughs> so if we take some of the wacky scenes, what do they have going on? First looking at the Project X party, this one is far and away the most ridiculous, while still being in the realm of the real. And despite all of the absolute chaos going on, breaking windows, setting fire to cars, if I'm a concerned engineer worried about how a party like this is going to affect the structure of the floor, uh, how can we quantify this? First, let's get an estimate for how many people are in a relatively confined space. Uh, here we are. Ballpark this at about, what, maybe 200 people in the backyard? Which is a lot, but over a space that has to be at least a couple thousand square feet, and that loading isn't particularly high. But for those of y'all who are familiar with the movie, you might recall that Project X was based on real events, specifically an Australian kid's house party gone wrong that made wild headlines when the story broke. What would you say to other kids who were thinking of partying when their parents are out of town? Get me to do it for you. Get you to do it for you. Not don't do yes. it. Nah, get me to do it for you. Best party ever so far, that's what everyone's been saying, so... Love that guy. In the interview, the report is that they had as many as 500 people there, which is a fair bit. If I want to back calculate based on the conservative design, these folks would need to be spread out over at least 2,200 square feet, which is probably a lower figure than the square footage of the house. And obviously, these folks were spread out throughout the whole property. I mean, sure, there could be concentrations of something that might locally exceed a design value, but if these loons aren't breaking the seams, then maybe things aren't so wild after all. Well, unless I take that car scene seriously, 
Obviously, the structural impact in this case was low, as the pool does a good job of dissipating that weight, but what exactly is that? Well, doing some easy maths, uh, estimating the force of the car is equal to the velocity squared times its mass, and assuming Minimi tops out at a good 20 miles an hour before taking the rolly for a bath, it's a good thing that he didn't hit a structure, otherwise something like a 25,000 pound load might have brought down the roof. Flamethrowers aside, that might have been the biggest threat to the building. Moving on to the next example, we've got This is the End, some classic Seth Rogen absurdism that starts out at least as a uh, typical buddy party film and morphs into something rather different. But at least from some early scenes, we can see how James Franco's party is depicted with a few dozen folks in his living room having a very normal time. Craig Robinson does play on the piano at one point, which we've discounted from the previous example, but briefly we can see that the magnitude of the load wouldn't be too problematic, so it doesn't seem like we ever reach a floor loading that would exceed the Project X example, at least until they start chipping the floor away, but by that time, the party is long over with. I mean, earthquakes and sinkholes are technically a part of the destruction, but that's not what we're talking about. Finally, there's Superbad, which despite its place in the party movie Hall of Fame is less about throwing the most brazen bash, but more about nerds that idolize them and the antics around their experience. I am McLovin. There's some solid underage drinking. I'm gonna need to see some identification. Fist fights and dancing, but nothing that should be punching holes in the floor anytime soon. And big brain folks out there might have noticed that none of these are actually college parties. Uh, yeah, uh, so there are some scenes from Old School, Accepted, The Social Network, Animal House, even Blue Mountain State, but uh, nothing really jumped out at me from those. And honestly, this is a short video, not a dissertation, so if you're thinking of any movie scenes or TV shows or house parties that trump these examples, fire them down in the comments. All in all, maybe it shouldn't be so surprising that our design codes are broad enough to keep even the most wild of events standing upright. If they weren't, then I guess it would be a problem. Outside of the rare news story, we don't have an epidemic of structural failures, particularly due to dancing. So what's the craziest thing that you've seen at a party? And has anybody broken through the literal floorboards? Anyways, that's a wrap on this one. Hopefully if you've stuck around this long, you've appreciated this absurd little closer look. And the next time you're at a party, uh, please bring this video up. Uh, I'm sure that conversation will go like really well. In the meantime, please hit the like and subscribe buttons, uh, leave a comment, and uh, I hope you have a great day. Adios.